One of the reasons I don't love the AI wave is that, or at least the kind of AI grifters, is that they come in and they're like, oh, well, we'll just create the website for you and we'll, we'll, you don't ever have to touch it again and we'll create the image and you don't have to do that anymore. And you have to, it's like, I like building this stuff. I think it's a human characteristic of ours. And it's, we're so lucky to be able to have the brains to sit and figure things out and problem solve and work deep problems, grinding them down to simple solutions. This is a unique characteristic of us humans. So this idea that like, just to make some money, some of these companies are coming along and saying, oh, forget about all that. We'll just do all that for you. And it'll be like way shittier and less attention to detail and probably not even what you actually wanted, but it'll be a website. Good enough, right? What does our culture start to look like once we've lost that kind of pursuit of craft and, and honing our skills and, and things like that? So I don't take shortcuts because I like the process and I spend the time to make the design incredible. I whittle down the design. It's not something I just whipped up in five minutes. It's something I probably spent way more time on than I should have. But I did it so that like you could see it and you could appreciate it and it could be spread across tens of thousands of websites and they could appreciate it. And maybe it helps somebody tell their story or it helped start a movement or it does some incredible little thing. And then my little touch is part of it. Welcome to the Yo Podcast, an interview series where we spotlight leading designers, developers, and makers. I'm your host, Rob Hope, and today we have Mike McAllister, a designer, software engineer, and course creator from the Midwest, USA. For nearly two decades, Mike has been crafting quality WordPress products, achieving significant success when WP Engine acquired his array themes and atomic blocks. Following the success and leveraging his shipping experience, he created the Liftoff course to help creators bring their products to market. Today, we delve into his new Oli WordPress blog theme, how exactly he plans to monetize it, his preference for taking the long road when working on design, his passion for space photography, and what the first order of business would be if he took over at WordPress. Yo, Mike. Welcome to the show, my man. Thanks so much for having me, Rob. So I'm trying to dig the dirt up about Milwaukee. Yeah. <laughs> and I got squat, dude. I got squat. <laughs> You've got the biggest T-Rex head in the world and a statue of the Fonz. It's absolutely awesome out there. Tell me what makes Milwaukee home for you. That's a great question. And what, what a great place to start when you're looking into somebody, you know, where they, where they live. Um, I grew up in Illinois, which is just south of, of Wisconsin. Yeah. And uh, I never growing up ever heard of Milwaukee, never thought about it, never imagined I'd end up here. But here I am, you know. Um, yeah. And uh, Milwaukee is it's a very interesting city. It's it's not one you hear about often. It's uh, just an hour and some change away from Chicago, which is obviously everyone knows of. Uh, so it's 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 a big city. Um but it's a small city vibe. So we're, we're centrally located. I live basically right on Lake Michigan. Um, so it's another awesome thing. So you get all of like the benefits of a big city, um, but without any of the hassle, we have our own music scene, our own coffee scene. We have our own cultures and our own like, you know, local icons and, and, and everything you would expect. Um, but it's just kind of like one of those cities that you just don't hear a ton about. So um, it fits my personality great because I'm kind of somebody who likes to be active and out there, but also fly under the radar just just a little bit, you know, I don't. I heard there's an eight day music festival out there. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, Summerfest is, uh, if that's the one you're talking yeah. about, Summerfest is one of the biggest music festivals in the world. There's a whole chunk of the city that's like dedicated to this festival and it's just there always they don't take it down it's just they keep all the stages there and wow. every year it comes in and it gets like huge artists come to to milwaukee for this thing so yeah we got it we got uh, more than a few things going on and um i love it here it's currently snowing right now so we got we got that too snowing wild yeah it's like 30 degrees here in cape town okay 
Should we get into a game? You want to play a game? Let's do it. Okay. This game is called No Context. I'm going to give you two options. You simply got to shoot back either of the two. No context given. No explanation needed on why you chose it at all. You got it. Perfect. Stargazing at Lakefront State Park or making music with your EP133. Coming in hot with these questions already. Oh my God. I gotta say, I gotta say stargazing on that one. Saturn or Mars? Saturn, easy. NASA or SpaceX? I'm gonna say NASA. The QWERTY typewriter from 1873 or the mechanized printing press? from 1455. I'm gonna go with the QWERTY on that one. American Pale Ale or Indian Pale Ale? Indian Pale Ale. Man, this next one, I had to like look at YouTube videos <laughs> just to try and get this pronunciation. Paps Blue Rhythm Lager or Schlitz Lager? Oh, wow. I'll take I'll take a pass on both of those and, and, and have a water maybe. <laughs> <laughs> But you got the pronunciation right. Punk rock or Daft Punk? Daft Punk. All day. RDO or Pandora? RDO. Rest in peace. Jason Cohen or Jason Freed? Jason Cohen. Another great question. Reading or woodworking? Oh, man. I get woodworking, for sure. Squarespace or Wix? Squarespace. WordCamp US or WordCamp EU? I've yet to make it to the EU one, so I, I can't say for sure, but that seems to be the one everyone loves. So uh, I'll say WordCamp US because that's the one I've done. And lastly, design details or delivering on deadline? Design details all day. Who needs deadlines? So which, <laughs> which is more likely to come first? The arrival of extraterrestrial life on planet Earth or WordPress sorting out its UX for beginners? You better roll out the red carpet for those aliens because that's probably happening first, my friend. A huge shout out to our season sponsor, Webflow, who allow us to build websites with the power of code without writing any. You can take control of a website's HTML code, CSS styles, and JavaScript animations, all within a stunning visual canvas. I use Webflow for my personal website and it's a breeze to make quick changes. You open up the visual designer, click right into an element, tweak, and then hit publish top right. The change is deployed and live in seconds. I'm also really enjoying the remote collaboration feature. The other day I wanted to integrate my most recent five blog post titles on my homepage. So I called up my dear friend Matt to help guide me. After assigning Matt an admin role, he helped quickly integrate the title block and buzz me to take a look. I logged in, tweaked the block heading, then deployed it all myself. Brilliant. Webflow is totally free to get going and you only start paying when you need to go live. So head over to webflow.com for your next website build. Dude, you are super passionate about solving this problem and WordPress been around forever, so many hands in that pie, but you created arguably the best and most beautiful onboarding I've seen for a WordPress theme with Ollie. Thanks. Okay, so this is the Ollie dashboard, which is basically a one-stop hub for all of the tools and settings and resources related to the Ollie theme. So this is a landing page where we have quick access to hop into the setup wizard, uh, quick access to the docs and um, a place where you can get help, support, ask questions and contribute on GitHub. And here at the bottom, we have a few quick video tutorials that you can click and load and watch um, right on this page. And just to watch the progress where you launched it in beta from, I think it was April last year, and you, you were creating those videos and the onboarding was so slick. And then I saw you landed into the directory on .org. I think that was November last year, <laughs> but stripped of its onboarding. Yeah. And you, you, it's almost like you started backpedaling. You started like, guys, this is a tutorial video and how to do this. You've got to set the home page and you've got yeah. to set this. Why even go down that road of trying to get things on .org? It's a good question. I mean, there's, I actually pinged my audience and asked them whether or not it was worth it to do it on .org. And the results were surprising in that, you know, five years ago, I think everyone would have been like, definitely put it on there because 
uh, it is a distribution channel that is piped into every single WordPress install on the planet. Um, and so you can go in there and type in do 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 Ollie, and then it pops up and you can install it quickly. Um, otherwise, you know, you have to distribute it yourself. You have to manage updating that yourself via some funny mechanism and just the simplicity of being able to create a product and put it out there and have it hosted there, distributed there, a central source of truth that you can point everyone to over there. Um, that alone was enough of a reason for me to like want to do it. Again, there's a lot of people who want to be on there to kind of, you know, they have big revenue ambitions and they want to kind of game the system and they want to do all these funny things. And so there's a lot of reasons people go on there. I just wanted to simplify being able to distribute my stuff there and um, do it the, the quote WordPress way. And it just made it just made sense to 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 do that and to kind of fight through the reviews and all the public commentary and everything else. You know, by the by the end of all of it, it was like I don't know if this was <laughs> this was worth it, but I'm happy it is on there and I'm happy we're kind of like past that point. So when I was deep in uh, the WordPress game building themes, we used a plugin called TGM. Um, or yeah. it was mm -hmm. like a library. And why why is Oli not using TGM to suggest some sort of plugin needed to activate the onboarding? You know, uh, it's a great question. And for people who are maybe unfamiliar with, with this, you know, so we, we built this onboarding wizard sort of to help people get into Word, a, a WordPress site easier, like set up some common things like you see in onboarding and SaaS, program, SaaS apps and things like that. This is like, not uncommon these days to see a kind of a walkthrough thing not really seen in wordpress so we decided to kind of design this thing and really like put a lot of care and attention into and using all of our years of wordpress experience to be like oh these are the problems they have let's just solve those right away in an onboarding thing with the ollie setup wizard we can do all of that for you in one streamlined interface in one place you don't go half you don't have to go hopping around the wordpress admin to do that, we've brought all those things here. So setting up your site settings, your brand, creating pages, and setting your homepage and blog, we just do all of that for you um, in this this beautiful little wizard. So to do that, we built this thing, and it's it's you know it becomes a debate on, in WordPress about what belongs in a theme and what belongs in a plugin. And it used to be more clear what what you could put in a theme, what could be in a plugin, but Everything's kind of different now with modern WordPress in that these things are all mashed together. Content and design are all smashed together. And some things uh, might be settings, but they're specific to the theme. So anyway, it became this big es esoteric debate about it. But the um, idea was that we wanted to ship this experience as one complete thing. Again, to like to continue solving, to try and solve these problems that people have had forever. Like one of the problems is that users are inundated with having to make decisions about plugins or find plugins or install plugins and you know so anyway we we thought that like this thing was tied so tightly to the theme that we thought it could exist there um and we got a lot of agreement that it, it could but ultimately we did splinter it out and put it into a plugin and what rob's saying is there's a you know, a, a library that lets you kind of easily um reference that that plugin when you install a theme, you click it and you can the plugins installed. But the problem at the time was that the plugin review queue was 900 or maybe even more than 1200 plugins deep. So it was going to be several months. I mean, still to this day, I and mean, that was November. Now it's February and it's 400 wow. plugins still in there. So, you know, this idea that we would put in the plugin, not that big of a deal, but then it's like, well, okay, well, we can only release part of this this whole thing we just worked on then. And so that it became a whole thing around that. And um, it's still, by the way, it's been submitted, but it it's it's still not been uh, reviewed or approved yet. So we're still kind of in this like, you know, uh, plugin review uh, purgatory. So hypothetically speaking, Matt Mullenweg calls it a day. Mm -hmm. And he says, guys, there's been a huge innings. Uh, we've, you know, conquered a lot of the internet, but I'm out. I'm just out. In steps in Mike, and he is now the new CEO of Automatic. What is the first order of business to return WordPress to a place people love? Excellent question. I would say 
that there are some we first of all with this new block editor and site editor it, it is a contentious that it used to be contentious but now i think people have kind of come around to it it's it, it is incredibly capable it is powerful it is an engine a style and design engine never seen before in wordpress it has so much potential um, but i think the we're kind of losing people with the ui and ux and it's getting better with every release it's getting a lot better but still i think there's i i talk to people all the time because i have a product in this space and so i i just hear the pain points and i my, i set my wife up with websites uh, for her nonprofit stuff and i watch her use it and i kind of get to see real world like ooh, okay you know i can figure this stuff out but she's and she's used wordpress plenty in the past and she's like trying to figure out the difference between the site editor and block editor and all this other stuff so I'm seeing a lot of like just real world pain points there. And so I think, um, and I just kind of tweeted about this the other day in, in more of an abstract way, but we have lost the kind of education element in WordPress. And that if you look around in modern, you know, libraries or React or Laravel or SaaS apps, education is such a massive part of these companies because they know that education is cutting down customer support. It's helping people use your products or you're keeping people in or reducing churn. It's marketing um, because you can create incredible content from it um, and all kinds of other benefits that are just contained in, in education and, and sort of um, better docs and everything else. That's why Ollie has been, was a, kind of success right away because education was a huge part of it. I knew creating a product in this space, you can't just create something and throw it out there. They're not going to figure it out. And um, furthermore, it's just boring. Uh, I, I like to make something and show people like, check this out. Look at this. You, you know, I think that's another place where with WordPress, it's like it could do all this stuff, but people don't know it. So it's like, well, now I have to show them. And by creating the product and making it really beautiful and then showing them how to do it and showing them that they're capable of it, um, it's kind of an empowering thing. And they're going to hopefully attach that feeling to like, oh, Mike showed me how to do that and his product's nice. and Maybe one day I'll buy something from him. Um, so anyway, all that to say, we would have to like really rein in the education on this. I would take the YouTube channel and I would turn it into an education powerhouse Think of think like modern day podcast with like hosts, regular education series, building with the block editor, this, this, this. If you look at the YouTube channel right now for WordPress, it's just like randomly uploaded videos from WordCamps and things like that. So that is highly underutilized in my opinion. So I would just focus everything on the user experience right away. I would drop all the side projects and everything else um, and just really hone in on keeping people in WordPress and growing the next 10 years of the user base. I think having a YouTube presence with real investment and and some proper opinion leaders up top, high quality video is great for the community too. And the commenting within the YouTube channels, I've seen other platforms do it. So Webflow example, I've, I've seen a couple of live streams where they just announced there was an integration with a spline tool and there's core web, uh, webflow guy and the core spline guy and they're doing a live demo and they're saying hey guys this is how we do it. community is just chiming in what about this these are my problems next thing you know it's added to the roadmap it's all happening through youtube which was wonderful to see so like i fully agree on that so you know having created a lot of tutorial videos and i know you have as well how do you think we can combat the changing ui versus the static nature of a video and I know YouTube's a bad bad one to just switch out a video but have you seen any ad advancements lately where people are trying to tackle this I haven't and I it is a problem that I have all the time in, in that like everyone's like yeah video is the place to be these days it totally is and it also is like one of the most like resource intensive time consuming formats you can do because you have to you know what it's like to try and sit and uh, you've maybe written a script and just trying to even just reading a script sometimes. Some days you're like doing the same take 50 times and then the next day you get it all in one go and it's it's so variable and it's 
you know, you watch tutorials, people make it look like it's easy. You know, you just get your uh, teleprompter going. No, no, it's not that easy. It's very difficult. And especially when you're talking about technical stuff and trying to like simplify it and synthesize it down into consumable ideas and video. And then next week the thing changes and you're like, what am I doing with my time here? What am I doing with my life? Dude, I can feel these words. Um, so no, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. And YouTube, like you say, you just have to upload a new video and maybe decide whether or not you want to keep the old video or not and confuse people when it's gone. I don't know. You know, it's just like... Ch change the title. Yeah. Um, to yeah. Don't watch this. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Keep it there. But yeah. I recorded a, a video for Squarespace in... It was so many years ago, but it was just how to create a one-page website using Squarespace. But Squarespace made a big change in their platform from 7.0 to 7.1. Yeah, really debatable, like uh, increments of numbers. But um, this video I have, it's it's currently got 70,000 views, and people still watching it. And the UI is completely different. Yeah, it is completely different. So they almost watching it from like a macro point of view of like, oh, I should probably put the header there or like, but they cannot follow the tutorial. Anyway, I do feel there's a massive, massive opportunity. The tech behind maybe someone speaking, talking about, hey, this is where you install here and then you can switch out the mm -hmm. the UI and the background. Yep. So layers to your tutorial. That's really interesting actually. But wow, I can't imagine the tech. So you, it's almost like you've got a timeline in the background script talking points overlay video and then it's layered compressed together there's your video and, yep. and it changes yep wow let's just let's just circle back to ollie quick i know that on the on the landing page itself on oliewp.com there's talk of a pro version mm -hmm. so i just want to add a little bit more context for people listening who aren't familiar with the the theme this really is the time saver when it comes to just getting started with wordpress they you know, patterns is something recently introduced. And and if you haven't actually used WordPress in a few years, just install Ali on a fresh install and just browse to the patterns and you can insert, you know, full page layouts. There are so many components that are pre-done for you. And the design, you know, definitely we're talking top 1% of the WordPress themes out there. So having all the patterns in place, having all these um, components like testimonials and so on, where is the pro version going to go? Uh, yeah, right into patterns, basically. So um, as Rob alluded to, like patterns are going to be and currently are such a massive part of the new era of WordPress. And just for like a little historical context. So I had a I had a WordPress theme business years ago called Array. And my whole thing was like beautiful design. Everything I do was like basically me just getting my design kicks and being able to wrap that into a product and put it out there. That was the same thing with Array. It was just like beautifully designed WordPress themes. But back then it was like, you know, largely static WordPress themes. We didn't have all this, these moving parts where you could customize everything. So I would just design them, build them, ship them. But nowadays, like we have this modern WordPress and we have these things called patterns. They're just like pre-designed kind of sections of pages or full page layouts, um, just collections of, of content blocks basically. Um, and patterns are awesome because, again, thinking about saving time, you don't have to get in there and design a hero header if Ollie or other block themes come with five or six of them. You just click it, add it to the page, tweak a few things, and on with your day. Um, and with Ollie, again, you know, I just am just putting everything I can design-wise into these because I know they're they're hard to create and get them pixel perfect in WordPress. It's, it's, it's a lot of work. I'm willing to do that because I love design and I love like jamming it into tech and, and figuring out how to make it like bulletproof. And, uh, so anyway, patterns, we've got a maybe 60 something patterns and the theme itself. And then the pro version, uh, which hopefully Q1 will be releasing, um, just working on it yesterday. The pro one is going to be patterns kind of taken to the next level. Um, I'm going to, let's see, how much do I share here? Um, Take me to this level. Let's go. Let's go. Why not? This is the place. This is the place. We'll just announce it here. So let's go. we have a, um, we've developed a, a sort of a cloud platform for patterns and that 
you know, instead of shipping, you know, 400 patterns into a theme for you, then you have to deal and sift through 400 patterns and maybe you don't want those. Instead, they'll all be in the cloud. And we built an interface that looks very much like the pattern interface of WordPress. So we're just kind of, wow. we're, we're blending into WordPress. It just feels like it's part of WordPress. It doesn't feel like a page builder that's bolted on top of it um, or anything like that. It's very native feeling. And this thing will let you browse patterns and sort them in different ways that you can't uh, currently. You can do favorites. You can do, you can view your recently used patterns. You can um, view them by uh, pattern or you can view them by pattern collections as we're calling them. And pattern collections are basically like uh, several full page layouts that are all designed to look together. So it's almost like you're getting different websites um, via patterns. And you could take those download them to your site. You can quick insert them. You can customize them. You can leave them in the cloud and only, you know, um, copy the code if you want and, and bring them down. And so we're going big on patterns because this is going to be the future of design in WordPress. And I'm confident that there are going to be more people who want to use patterns than want to make them. And it's like, we'll just make them for you. And we'll make them great. We'll make them so great that you're like, well, I don't, well, I don't need to make my own patterns. Really, I'll just use these. And I'll customize them as needed. Maybe I'll duplicate them and make my own. And, um, so yeah, that's where we're going with that. And just keeping it simple. I'm just keeping this like a very simple, new, modern WordPress product business. I'm trying to, I'm trying to like infuse stuff from outside of the WordPress ecosystem because WordPress, the, the product eco ecosystem, is kind of stale. It's kind of boring. It kind of all looks the same. I just want to start to bring in other ideas into this thing and modernize it. Like if, if ever there was a time to do something different and modernize the product space, it's now, right? We got this new brand new, you know, engine in WordPress. And so that's why the Ollie site doesn't really look like a WordPress site, the typical like header, three boxes, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, it's designed to look like maybe a product that is a SaaS or something like that. And um, it operates in the WordPress space. So that's a TLDR. There's, there's more to it. There's some other like awesome pro features that you won't see anywhere else, but that's, that's where we're going to start. That's super exciting. It sounds like, like a good framework. You know, once you're saying it's in the cloud, you can just add to it remotely, right? Is that the idea? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Exactly. So I've got a question here from Noel Talk from Human Made. Yeah. Yo, Mike, what's up? This is Noel Talk. Uh, come at you guys from Kharkiv, Ukraine. I have a question for you. Are all third-party uh, page builders inevitably doomed as Gutenberg progresses and matures on its roadmap? Thanks. I don't think so because the, the thing with Gutenberg and um, the, the block editor and, and the new block editor in WordPress is like it has to work for everyone it has to work for a thousand different user personas and it has to do it well and it has to do you know so you can't get very specific with it they're not going to add heavy developer features to it they're not going to add a ton of responsive features to it because they have to keep it as lightweight and sort of as benign as possible so that it can take on so many different contexts these page builder plugins they can go crazy and say we're going to add everything and we're going to be a plugin for developers or builders. And then they can add all the features they want to support that. I think Matt Mullenweg would love for everyone to just use the block editor and Gutenberg and, and really invest there and move all their tooling to that. In some ways I would too. I would love to see us rally around the native editor because I don't know, after WordPress has been fragmented so many different ways with all these page builders, I would love to see the experience come full circle and kind of smoothed out again for like the, the end user. So it's like everyone kind of is operating on the same thing. You know, like think about Shopify. That's a closed SaaS app and they have design standards and they have components that you have to use if you're gonna build into the platform and Maybe it's not as flexible, but it is a uniform experience for the end user. They all get mostly the same thing. Standards high. It's yeah, absolutely. And it, it really raises the bar for the, for the platform. So 
But ultimately, no, I think there's always going to be like right now in WordPress, there's one called Bricks that everyone's talking about. I haven't used it extensively. I installed it to check it out. But to me, it just feels like it's just like another page builder. It's like one of the many other ones, the, the Beaver Builder and um, all these other ones. So Elementor, it's, it's just another one of those. And so you would think in 2023, I think this one got really popular. We'd be beyond that. Nope. They just proved that there's a whole nother one coming. And um, so, no, I think there's going to, they're going to cater to their crowd and there's always going to be that. And that's cool too. That's the flexibility of WordPress is that you can build a multi-million dollar business on an extra layer of WordPress if you want. And WordPress is like a SQL database yeah. Yeah. for your <laughs> full top layer. Yep. It's interesting to think of the uptake of Elementor obviously f fantastic minds behind the marketing and the team mm -hmm. and they did a lot of like, good things there was a lot of drive there competitive team but th the uptake there at the time of where wordpress was this was pre patterns yeah this was like pre block editor and they got a lot of that market it'll be interesting to see where bricks goes okay. because a lot of problems are being solved with these patterns oh yeah you know you always mention we 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 you know when i speak about one page love i also say we but it's just me um, you teamed up with Patrick Posner, right? Are yeah. you guys mm -hmm. yep. 50 50 on Ollie? Or is he just a, a developer outsourcing? Nope. He is, uh, he is 50 50. And um, it's been really nice and refreshing working with somebody who kind of gets the vision and is just as kind of motivated to make something different and um, kind of make a splash. So, yeah, Patrick is, has been great. He's, He's the brains on the on the code side of things, like you know, archi architecting this this cloud thing, and um, he just has that kind of brain. He has a his, his own plugin called Simply Static, which is like a static site generator for WordPress, and he has a whole business on that. And um, so yeah, it's been it's been great. I really appreciate his his technical prowess and and helping with this thing. That's great because I mean you were rolling solo for a long time, and then it was yep you know, employed for a while. Um, if we recording this podcast in five years, are we going to say, remember that time we spoke about Oli and it was acquired by WP Engine? Right. <laughs> Just quickly there, you know, um, we're not going to go deep into that. There's some podcasts I'm going to link to that talk about your atomic blocks, mm -hmm. talk about the acquisition of WP Engine. For someone who's listening that's been slogging away, let's just say not specifically in WordPress, but maybe they got a side project and so on. And they're not getting that much traction. Monetization is not that great. You definitely had a lot of traction with Atomic Box, and that's the reason why. Um, and Array was doing fantastic. That's why it got acquired. But for someone who's maybe slogging away, slogging away, hoping that their product's going to take, would you advise just having a sabbatical and actually just work for a company for a while? I, I remember you saying it was it was kind of refreshing. Yeah, it was. It was a different set of challenges you know i mean for um the longest time i was just on my own i was doing freelancing at the start of my career and then i got into products and i did that for a long time and um you know it happened a, a good time to want to do something different i did a lot of like leadership stuff there and product development and less uh nit nitpicking designs and more like high level stuff and working with vps and stuff that was a that was a whole different skill set I never had and it was interesting and challenging and, and maybe gave me a different perspective when I got out to, to do something else um, but yeah I would say if you were like you know if you're grinding away on something and you feel passionately that there is a place for it there is a market there is an audience for it and you're just not connecting yet I would say like don't let go of that. If you feel that passionately, that tells me you have some idea that there's a need. You, you know, you're not delusional. There's some, there's something there. Um, but audience building and audience finding is like one of the hardest parts of it. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about that with, if we talk about liftoff. Um, you know, is is it's a hard thing to find a new audience. With WordPress, for me, it's kind of easy in a way because I have a sat or like a, a concentrated audience around me for WordPress. I've been there for so long; people know me, so it's like I have an inbuilt audience. But like, if you don't have that, it can be very difficult. And so that's where you kind of got to get out there and get into um, 
different groups, whether it's on like Facebook groups or um, there's all kinds of uh, private Slack communities that you can get into. And you just have to start just making those connections. And sometimes it's like literally the smallest group of people, the most benign person you talk to that gets that says like, oh, I know somebody on product hunt and we can like hunt that for you and get it to the top. Like it's all about like those kinds of connections and, and doing it. But at the same time, sometimes it is nice to just hit the reset button and and go do something you didn't thought you'd do. And um, that also can send you off into space in a different way. So and get a salary and and get paid <laughs> for once. <laughs> Um, great, Mike. Great. So let's let's break into a second intermission. Cool. It's called overrated, underrated. Okay. I'm gonna give you a topic, a brand, a person, and you just gotta shoot back if you think it's overrated, underrated, or properly rated. If you think the world sees it in a fair way, you got it. Got it. Laravel. I think that is underrated. Tailwind CSS. That is properly rated. Twitter underrated hot take Oof, like that a lot elon musk overrated crypto overrated spicy youtube even with as big as it is i'd say well yeah uh, I, I was almost gonna say underrated but i'll say properly rated i think it's where it should be right now photoshop Ooh, underrated my man still i still tinker around in there sometimes i use it every day that's awesome uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Oh, underrated. Owning your own website CMS. Overrated. A lot of work. And lastly, online courses. They're having a moment right now. I would say they're properly rated. For the listeners out there that aren't familiar with your liftoff course, in April 2022, you, lift, you launched your liftoff course to help makers pinpoint their expertise and turn it into digital products like courses, ebooks, memberships, digital goods that earn recurring revenue. How is it doing right now? Uh, right now it's slow. I would say sales have, have tapered off for sure at this point. That was 2022. It was around, uh, yeah, about two years ago. Um, yeah, I would say it's definitely, it's definitely tapered off. Part of that is I just do not promote it nearly enough. You know, I have just so many things in my world of creation that I'm tinkering with. Um, but I actually just sat down and wrote a list of things I need to do to kind of get the get it back into people's uh, mindset this year. Uh, because the, the stuff in there is not easily dated material. And I wrote it that way per purposefully. And that I was like, this is going to be stuff that like, I don't, I'm not going to mention a bunch of companies and tools and apps and things like that that won't be here in a few years. Like I had been doing digital products for so long in various forms, whether it's WordPress themes and stock photography, all these other things I was doing that I had learned just a lot of baseline knowledge on it. And I was like, that's the stuff that I want to put in there. And so, yeah, I would say it did really well at the beginning. Um, I think I made maybe like maybe like 10,000, something like that the first month and kind of slowly tapered from there. And, um, you know, I had no uh, expectations for this. That you, Like everything I do, these things are just personal things I need to do. Like I always wanted to write a book and do a course. And so finally I was like, I'm just going to do it. Um, I don't care how long it takes and I don't care how much I make. I'm just going to do it because... I learned so much in the process of doing these things and it's so fulfilling to me. And it's just like with woodworking or whatever. I just love working on the stuff. And if you get something awesome at the end, that's cool too. But um, the process is so fulfilling. Hey friends, this is Rob from The Edit. If you're enjoying the new season and want to help support, the best thing you can do is just tell a friend about the podcast. All you need to do is send them to yo.fm and everything's there. The second best thing you can do is probably comment on YouTube or just give it a rating on your favorite podcast platform. Thanks for all the good vibes so far in the season. I'm really happy with how the video has turned out. Okay, back to the interview. This is so good for me because, you know, here we are on the podcast. Sure, we're talking about your stuff, but I get to ask you whatever I want. And I'm busy with a course. And mm -hmm. it's so interesting to see this part in the journey. We're talking two years. We're talking long tail sales. <laughs> but now we have to focus on distribution. Yeah. And this is a problem every course creator has that's listening to this. 
Uh And this is a wonderful thing to talk about. You know, you've just created your list and there's, you know, ideas you that aren't going to work. There's ideas that are going to do fantastic. But, you know, the first thing that came to mind, and I'd lo- I would love to just freestyle for a second on just like what we can do. So just mm-hmm. a little more context and correct me if I'm wrong, there is no video version of the course. It's, a, right. it's an ebook. It's an audio book that's actually been outsourced to, it was an award-winning narrator, I think. Yep. And mm-hmm. the, the, the quality is super high. You can see Mike went into this and like all in. We're talking, he used, you know, video of an astronaut putting on a helmet. Um, then it's like you've got sound bites. Like everything is attention to the detail. There's no corner cut. Yeah. But and, but the passion was there and I could see during the process and then you launch and like wonderful. But you know, now you're working on Ollie. Yep. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, unless there's something new to do that I feel that is going to be a new chapter or, or tech to learn or a new you know, developing in this project, like you're probably not going to work on it anymore. Like you're not, mm-hmm. not going to tweak some words and call it version two. It's like no. you, mm-hmm. you got to add another layer to this thing. What What do you got? Give me Give me top three ideas to spice it up and speak to me a touch on distribution. Mm-hmm. It's a very difficult one, but every course li- creator is listening to this right now going, wow, that is yeah. hardcore difficult. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll start with the reverse. I'll start with the distribution part first just because that's top of mind but yeah i mean part of my problem was with without having sustained long-term sales is that i had the i had the passion and the interest to make this thing um but i did not have that audience and although i was building that audience as i was like working on the book and getting it out there and and kind of pre-marketing it I just didn't have a massive creator audience who was like, and, and I think it's also a specific crowd that like, there's a lot of people who buy digital goods, but the people who are going to make them and get out there and like really put in the work to create this stuff and f- distribute it and all this, stuff, that's, it's a smaller crowd. And so, um, it was hard to, to build that audience. And I was out there and, but just like I said, a few minutes ago, I was in different Slack communities and Facebook groups and kind of like, talking to people, finding out like what kind of things they struggle with in this stuff and and putting that stuff in the book. But ultimately, you know, my crowd was like largely WordPress people because that's where I had spent so much time. And so once the first six months after releasing it, like that kind of burned through my audience and I wasn't, I wasn't able to continue growing the audience at a rate that was like, you know, um, inspiring to like to keep going on it um so it it, it was just really hard so i would say uh, any advice for folks that are looking to do it like start building that audience as soon as you have the idea and start validating it there and 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 keep just doing that because or like you're saying like uh finding ways to after release it to keep it relevant and things like that i kind of blew everything right away i put i had all that stuff in there at the beginning and maybe i could have staggered it out that could have been interesting where it was like oh now it's a pdf version and then hey we're doing a audio book well, i just did it all at once and so it was like boom here's the package i think that is a strategy okay. delay the format so at least if you've got two or three formats those are two or three announcements yeah over two or three weeks definitely and your audience who's bought the book and's paid a price that's you know, let's call it $99. And then a week later, you've got, hey, it's going to go up to 119 because mm-hmm. we drop in the audio book. But if yep. you grab it now using Copon X, there, there's a lot of promo and marketing. Oh, yeah. But I hear you though, because after six months and the you, it's made bank, you've, you've ticked that creative box, you've scratched that itch. Now it's like the real grind. Mm-hmm. And that hustle grind is not necessarily in our DNA. And we're like, mm, I could create more things or I could, yeah. you know, promote it. And it's really real. Speak to me about affiliates. I didn't do any affiliates on that because I looked at a few different affiliate programs, uh, but they just were just so murky. Now um, I use Lemon Squeezy to sell my course. They didn't have affiliates back then. If they did, I would have enabled them because it all just would have been included in one, one package. Now they have affiliates and I definitely could, should, maybe will turn those on it and see if there's some juice left in it this year. But um, that could be a 
huge part of it. it the the that niche of creators and monetizing digital creations. I don't know if there's a bunch of people looking to be affiliates in that space. Maybe there are. Everyone's looking to make money, so I guess maybe there there always could be. But yeah, I think you'd be surprised. Yeah, I think you'd be surprised. Um, thirty percent of my ebook income was through affiliates. Okay, that's impressive. And at the time, it was Gumroad. Um, I'm looking to launch version two of my ebook with Lemon Squeezy. Yeah, and you know their their affiliate programs come a long way. I saw in the beginning, and you know props to them. They're rolling it out. They're making promises, and then they're they're fighting the good fight. But um, right now, I have probably five or six programs I'm an affiliate on and I am getting paid. One of them is the Premium Pixels by Ormond yeah. Clark. Um, I'm getting those hits. The reporting is great. Automatic payments. I think you can be confident to use Lemon Squeezy as an affiliate program. Yeah. And for me, it, you know, and again, I'm just freestyling, but it feels like the first order of business could be is just mailing the existing customers and saying, hey, you know, if you want to cut, um, mm-hmm. we've just rolled out this thing. How are you doing? Mm-hmm. Little check-in. Is anything you would have like, you know, you're, you're trying to add value at the same time as market. That's like a real like thing I've always yeah. tried. Any single time I've I've gone for the ask, I try and add that value up front, especially in that email. Yep. But uh, I want to just add a little bit more value to anyone listening. Pub- Pablo Stanley, you know Pablo Stanley? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the, yeah, the designer. So he's, you know, incredible designer. Yeah. He's got a huge history of of products that he's launched, and he just re- released the gorgeous UI course. Yeah, looks great. Okay, so he's released a new course, and I bought it yesterday. Um, you know, I'm not. You know, I'm definitely interested to how things are working behind the scenes. That was like eighty percent of my purchase. Oh yeah. You know? And that that trailer that he had for the course, wow, no, no. incredible. And it's great to see how you know he has evolved into a team, and he's really used all of them. Yeah. It's you can just see the execution. Yeah, is like from all sides. But what's really interesting, and I want to add this to the affiliate side of things, is that within 12 hours, I got an email saying, hey, check it out. You know, the, these are the tiered pricing levels we're rolling out. You know, these are the coupons. And, you know, we're offering 25% affiliate for our gorgeous UI course. Mm-hmm. Um, it would lo- it'd be great if you could join. You have to apply, sure. The quality is important there. But then they accompany the ask with a full media kit yeah wow. motion page they they had snippets that you could copy and paste as cold dms in mm-hmm. twitter it was like hey i really dug this you know ui course so they just they just made it really easy and i did a similar thing and i'm, I'm not saying mine was any better than pablo's his is fantastic good images and incredibly comprehensive yeah but you need to ask yourself how can we make this really uh-huh. easy for the affiliates to actually publish that blog post. Because if you just give them the homepage of of Liftoff and mm-hmm. you're like, hey dude, can you please write about this? And you can get 50%. But it's like, hey, you know, these are three to four different banners you can integrate on the side. Try not use these words. I, I did this um, all within the back of the ebook. And I was like, D- try not to use these terms. It's all about like time saving, snackable, like lean into yeah. these things. Yeah, yeah. And I've just got such good feedbacks. And and the the lead time from when I was dealing with an affiliate to them actually publishing was was always around 24 hours. Wow. Because okay. I just I just made it super easy for them. So yeah, just wanted to add that. Um, video, speak to me about video in your course. No, I think, I think in terms of content creation, I think I'm good on that. I think if I had maybe a little more momentum, I would consider it. I actually had, so one thing I did, um, was uh, as, as part of the package was I did a series of interviews with folks because I wanted to kind of get some different opinions and you know talk to successful creators and stuff but personally for me that actually that format that it didn't work out well because you're kind of chasing people around and some sometimes people commit and they they forget or they they, they don't want to do it later and that it was like yeah and then it was like written format for some of them wanted to just do a written format and some people wanted to do like video responses and stuff and it just became such a mess of of managing it and then you know i don't know if you've ever had to do this but somebody would respond in in video and then i was like oh cool i'll just transcribe it and i'll use that in the written thing but the way people talk on a video does not always necessarily read well in text and so there were some interviews where i was like that's cool um 
but it doesn't translate to text, unfortunately. So it, had I known that, I would have just done a proper video interview. It would have been a lot more work, but it would have been cool to do. Um, but I just wasn't thinking that way. I just wasn't in the video um, mindset at that point. Now going forward, anything I do, video will be a significant portion of it. Like Ollie, that was one thing where I was like, okay, I'm going to step up the video game there. Uh, similarly with affiliates, like that is one thing that will step one will be um, affiliates for Ollie. That makes sense. WordPress has a long history of affiliate programs and people, there's just so many people out there. I'm just trying to step into your shoes and you're thinking about, you know, cloud, you know, extracted patterns, mm -hmm. you know, teaming up with someone. You're talking about a pro version and here we are talking about creating a video yeah. for it for like a course ebook that you released two years ago. Yeah. You cannot do it all. And there's also a certain amount of energy you have in your tank. Yeah. And I'm telling you that energy is not there to create that form of video. So I just want to give you quick props is that those videos that you have done for all your are ultra clear. Oh, thanks. The, and it's a good it's a good level of distribution as well for anyone listening. It's like here's, you know, Mike and the WordPress platform, but he does a whole video on like how patterns work, exactly how they work. And that video, I think, has got 12,000 plays or something. Yeah. You talk about distribution. Like, that's organic SEO for people searching. How do patterns work? All of a sudden, it's like, hey, I'm Mike. You know, I've got this, you know, I've got quite a lot of free patterns here if you want to install this thing called Ollie. Yeah. It's a wonderful distribution. So, again, video, forget about the, the lift, of course. But anyone listening, don't forget is that the second biggest search engine is YouTube. I started making those videos for Ollie. And sure, it would be nice if one day they, people they convert and people like you know want to buy something for ali pro or whatever but i just don't even think about that when i'm making those videos i'm like okay how can i like the with use the patterns for example i'm like i need to actually educate people on this this needs to be an educational video marketing not a part of it i'll like throw the website out there but i'm not going to be like oh now I'm gonna blah 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 i just try to do it as organically as possible because trying to build trust right i'm trying to be somebody that's seen as a, an educator a trusted you know source of information in this new wordpress era where there's no there's no content out there so i'm just one of many there's there's not no content there's there are people doing it for sure but it ain't like the the old days where the wordpress uh content machine was just constantly churning so many blogs just endlessly producing content so it's it's different now so um, yeah, video is great. It's a it's an incredible format, and I think the stuff you see and like the intros of my videos and and your stuff is like just being authentic and genuine and being you uh, as a person instead of a business or a brand or whatever. It's just like just be you. Let let people like you, and then um, the stuff that you do will be interesting and and much more likely to be watched. Yes, people could sniff out a promotion within seconds. Oh. Yeah. 100%. So winding down, Mike, your work is clearly influenced by the wonders of astrology. Yeah. For listeners out there keen to dabble, you know, what is the ideal starter kit? And one step deeper is that what exactly are astrologers or, or just people passionate about the universe and outer space what are they actually looking for when they're mm -hmm. when they're dialed in up there? Yeah, so Rob's alluding to the fact I do um, essentially space photography. I have a big telescope in my backyard, not that big, but you know, not like a a NASA sized telescope. Uh, and I have a camera attached to it, and I just take long exposure photographs right here in the middle of the city. Um, and I use different filters to cut through the the light pollution. And uh, after enough time and enough processing and enough tinkering. I'm able to get some like pretty killer photography of space objects, talking about galaxies and nebulas and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, I love it because for me, um, I've always had kind of a fascination with, with outer space, but when I, uh, and it's also abstract to us, right? We spend a little time in school learning about it, but you don't really dive too deep into it. You don't, understand the scale of things how far things are away how big they are so when i'm personally when i'm like out there and, and photographing things and i'm pull down the data and i'm looking at it and i'm like whoa this is real 
this is not just some like figment of my imagination. This is like a real thing that's out there. It's millions of light years long and I just photographed it. Like, whoa, that's like the ultimate like photo, right? I'm like, I like taking photos of things here on earth too, but the fact that I am able to capture a galaxy is like mind boggling to me. And so I love that. It, and it, it really ties into like everything else I do because it's such a long process. This is a, th this is a theme in my life of like, I'm not afraid to take on long-term projects or things that take a while um, because I like the process. And then the outcome, I love looking at the, the outcome when I'm done because I'm like, yeah, I spent all that time and I learned so much along the way. So it's the same thing with astrophotography. I'm out there for hours. I'll set the thing up in the wintertime. I'll set it up. I have to come back inside and it just runs for hours. And then I have to go and take it out in the snow and, and, and pack it all up. But, you know, after shooting 14, 15 hours of it, I get an incredible photo. It's so fulfilling to me and it's so mind boggling that I, I'm able to do that. So um, personally, I just I just love capturing stuff like that and um, thinking about everything that's going on out there. There's we spend so much of our time here looking at computers and just worrying about things that like ultimately we shouldn't even be worrying about. So when you're out there looking at stuff, there is like a certain perspective where it's like, oh, no, that's just, it's a lot bigger than than what we see all day. So. That's my take. There's an element to you really earn that shot as well. Yeah. You know, if it was easy, one click, it's like, you're not appreciating that. That's right. You had to go dig through the layers of the universe yep. to get that snap. That's right. Hours, snow. Oh, yeah. And you go look at it and that's just so rewarding. Yeah. It's... Let's, tra let's transition it into, into product quick. Almost every single thing you do, there are no shortcuts. You you choose mm -hmm. the difficult road. It, it, and no doubt that you're growing, you know, you're learning new stuff. But for anyone listening out there that is scrolling hustle culture, quick shortcut, overnight success stuff, quick buck stuff, what advice do you have to them about product building? Like, is it is it not really going to bring happiness? Yeah, you know, it's... This ties into something else I've been thinking about recently. And one of the reasons I don't love the AI wave is that, or at least the kind of AI grifters, is that they come in and they're like, oh, well, we'll just create the website for you and we'll, we'll, you don't ever have to touch it again and we'll create the image and you don't have to do that anymore. And you have to, it's like, I like building this stuff because I think it's a human characteristic of ours and it's we're so lucky to be able to have the brains to sit and figure things out and problem solve and work deep problems grinding them down to simple solutions this is a unique characteristic of us humans maybe the only humans in the universe who knows um so this idea that like just to make some money some of these companies are coming along and saying oh forget about all that we'll just do all that for you and it'll be like way shittier um, and less attention to detail and probably not even what you actually wanted, but it'll be a website. Good enough, right? Um, sign up for a monthly uh, subscription. So I just, I, I don't like that because I think the second we lose the um, our uh, attention to detail, our, our interest in craft, um, I don't, what, what, is, what does our culture start to look like once we've lost that kind of pursuit of craft and, and honing our skills and, and things like that. So to your question, I don't take shortcuts because I like the process and the process, even if it takes 10 years to sell a business, it's always so rewarding. And I look back and I feel like I didn't take shortcuts and most, maybe some people don't care about that. I, I personally do. I like feeling the process and I like feeling the, the result from that. And, um, I've always just wanted my work to be kind of unimpeachable as well. I, I spend the time to make the design incredible. I whittle down the design. It's not something I just whipped up in five minutes in Figma. It is something I probably spent way more time on than I should have, but I did it so that like you could see it and you could appreciate it and it could be spread across tens of thousands of websites and they could appreciate it and maybe it helps somebody tell their story or it helps uh, um, uh, start a movement or it does 
some incredible little thing and then my little touch is part of it you know so um i like to 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 really steep myself in the stuff i'm doing because it makes me passionate about solving the problem and ultimately i think that makes a better product in the end fantastic take i'm trying not to use any wafty words here i love this line of thinking and i tend people do get to a kind of a weird place and every word you said was just perfect but I just listen to you speak and I feel that you have a deep care and respect to other humans. Oh, and, and it's intensely. like, you, and you, you don't want to create anything that, that doesn't acknowledge that they might have a problem or they, they're, they're just like you. And it's like, how would you like to consume a product? You know, I don't want anything spun up in AI that's got no substance and yeah. it was delivered in, in 12 minutes. Yeah. It's like, I want to arrive at a, and buy a product where someone like truly understood my problem and created exactly what I needed. And then they, they spent another 10% on top of everything just to sign it off. And that's how you want other, others to behave. So that's exactly how you're delivering your work. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we're part of the last wave of human crafted... <laughs> uh things but i'm i'm happy to be a part of it and i i'm just gonna yeah. keep going the way i always have incredible mike so where can the yo podcast listeners follow your journey you can find me on x formerly twitter slash mike mcallister mike m-c-a-l-i-s-t-e-r uh you can just go to my website mike mcallister.com you can I link off everything from there and then Ollie, OllieWP.com, and Liftoff is LiftoffCourse.com. That's that's all of my internet properties currently. And um, yeah, no, I, I appreciate if anyone has any questions or wants to like talk product or just you know go back and forth in DMs. I'm always around. So um, yeah, would love to, to talk to folks. Awesome, wonderful to chat to you, Mike. Take care. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Rob. Oh, 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 oh,